A little bit. Longest break in basketball history. It, it was very long. Um, so you come back, how do you get ready and, and get them going? Slowly. Um, learned over the years, you know, not to try to get too far ahead when you bring back, especially after, you know, we played at Tulsa. Most kids left from there on the 21st, and we didn't bring them back till practice yesterday. So um, a lot of trust in them to go home and do the right thing and stay in decent shape. Everybody made it back and back on time. That's a first in 20 years of coaching history. So um, they uh, did a good job of establishing and maintaining trust. And then we'll wade back into it. You know, I think um, yesterday was get everybody back on campus, get some conditioning back under us, really focused on us today. We'll focus on Jackson State tomorrow. What do you know about Jackson State? Not much. Um, they're hard to research on the stats, as Jerry can attest to. I have started to watch some film on them. Again, they've got our respect because of uh, how they play and the numbers they put up. But uh, at this point in time, it's still a lot about us. I'll delve into them today. Uh, Coach Schaefer knows everything about them. Uh, he can tell you uh, everything he needs to know. He's, he's watched every game they've played. So um, I'll sit down with him over lunch today and uh, start – worried about those guys. I know that they've got two post players that are undersized that really give a lot of people fit, scoring double figures in um, over nine or 10 games. So uh, it'll give us good, although not the same size, but good preparation for a Mississippi State team to open SEC play on Thursday. We haven't talked to you since before that Tulsa game. I mean, getting a win like that on the road, I, I know you go to a break, but just getting a win like that on the road, how much confidence does your team have now uh, going into this little stretch? I think as a result of what we did at Thanksgiving, playing down there three games in three days and winning some close games, it just was a sense of calmness over there. Although Tulsa was playing really well and uh, we were not uh, making shots early on, they stuck together again, uh, battled back, got another close win. Uh, it changes the way you feel at Christmas. You know, you go into Christmas with a loss after a big win over Nebraska, could have felt a lot different, but I know our kids uh, left out of Tulsa very high-spirited. Uh, I think it probably allowed them to be a little bit more motivated to work at home during the break, whereas if you let that one slip away, now you might not do that. So I think it carried us. Uh, it, was, it was a good win. We won a different way. We scored again with about eight seconds left, and we had to get a defensive rebound and a stop to um, win it, to get, off, um, to get out of there with, with a Christmas – uh, feeling win. Um, so I, I think it allowed us to come back like we did. Everybody make it back, everybody in good spirits. You know, everybody's got a little bit of a cough or a little bit of a, uh, you know, when you're around family and around little kids a lot during the break, you tend to pick up some germs. So hopefully we'll continue to stay healthy. Uh, just the final tune up as you get ready for conference play, just how important is this game on Sunday? Um, you have to have momentum going into the SEC. If you go into the SEC questioning or on a down tick, it doesn't matter who you play, much less playing the two-time national runner-up uh, first right off the bat. So I think it's very important that we play well. Uh, I don't think it's a game that um, we need to um, stub our toe in any shape, form, or fashion. I think we need to be as close to full 40 minutes as we've been. It's like that final exam in a class. You know, you've had all this buildup, you've had all the projects, you've had all the small exams. Uh, we're going to treat it like a final test. You know, we need to be as close, we need to be as good for f as close to 40 minutes as we've been throughout of our non-conference. And we need, we need to keep our momentum. I think we moved into the top 50 in the RPI. Uh, you don't want a loss to knock you out of that before you head into SEC play. Can a break maybe help some of the offensive struggles like Alexis is having and a little bit like? I think it can. Yeah, and, and they, they get extra gym time. We don't have class anymore. You know, for the next three and a half weeks, it's just basketball. So there's, there's not as many distractions. And I think it is a time when shooters can get in the gym, uh, can get confidence. I also think it's a time when, um, you know, shot selection is more – they're more aware of it. We've had more time to teach it. Uh, and I do think the long break can be good. As long as their legs are still under them, which I think most of the kids did a good job with. If you had a chance to look ahead to the conference, just what are your overall impressions of what the SEC has been doing? Um, 
you know, we've got some big wins and we've got some tough losses. Our RPI is probably the lowest that it's been in the last four or five years. So I think we've got some work to do in our league. Um, I think the, the teams at the top are, um, have done what they do. I think it's us teams in the middle and toward the bottom that uh, have the most to gain from um, the early part of the SEC schedule. So I have looked at it and we'd be crazy not to. I, I think, you know, last year I kind of talked about a north and a south division. It kind of seemed like we had seven teams and seven teams last year. Um, and that's the way it ended up. We had seven teams in and seven teams that didn't. I think this year there's maybe a central division as well that there's going to be a bunch of teams vying to get into that middle of the pack and then just see who can stay healthy, who can stay hot, who can um, weather the rigors of what the SEC can do to you with how the schedule can fall on you where you get two or three tough games, maybe two of them on the road and a, a really, really hard game at home in the middle of it. Uh, it just is – uh, it can be very exhausting if you allow it to be. So we need to be as in good a shape as we can. Uh, I do think this group has handled a lot of adversity. And again, a huge part of that was us being able to go to Italy early and get a lot of that stuff out of the way before games started counting. What are the one or two things, areas you need to see your team improve on before you hit the conference play next week? We just talked about it. I'm glad you asked that question. We need every single player to get one more defensive rebound per game than they've been getting. We are There's 351 Division One teams in the country, and we're 335th in defensive rebounding. So you can do the math on that. And I guarantee you, you can't tell me where the other the teams below us are, are located. Um, we've got to get better at defensive rebounding. Um, our league is built around several teams that rely on offensive rebounding, teams that we need to be able to compete with. So we've certainly got to get better at that. And then the other thing I challenged them to do is everybody make one more shot than you've been making. Increase your shooting percentage three points. If everybody in our rotation of eight players increases our field, their own field goal percentage by three to five points, then we can be competitive and be one of those teams that – maybe gets into the middle of that league and uh, makes it hard on the teams at the top. Anything else? Thanks, Coach. All right.